Well, here we are again today, folks. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. I got some plain talk I'd like to talk to you about today and uh, ask you a question. Would you like to be a mountain or do you want to be a valley? Are you a valley or are you a mountain? The question is, is that God waters this earth with the mountains. He has a system and the system works. And the system is the high mountains and the mountain ranges of this earth. God has fresh snow and fresh ice on those mountains. And he melts that snow every year and brings the fresh water down. And he says in the Bible that that fresh water floweth down and goes into the earth and comes back to where it went and where it came from. And it goes out of sight and it comes back to where it came from. And the, what God made this ecosystem work so that when he draws the water up into the sky, you see the sun drawing the water up in the sky and then he has it come back down as uh, snow. And then he, he made the dew. God made the dew. That's like a small Christian who just got started in He's, he's going along and he's uh, doing all he's, uh, all those around him that saw him come from his place of being a heathen to a place to where he was doing what God would have him do. And as he came around to doing that, he's like the do. And I was talking to my wife this morning and went out, she was out there early watering the garden and everything and I got to looking at it and I realized last night it was so hot you couldn't hardly breathe, and then this morning it's so cool that the change from the heat and cool overnight made a dew on the ground this morning, and that dew itself had watered the garden to a certain extent. It was small, but it was very necessary, and God takes care of the necessary things that we don't see. We don't see how necessary some of the things in our life are. I would ask you today, are you like the mountains where the big waters come from, or are you like the dew? When you're a young Christian and you just get in, you like, need to be like the dew. And you still need to have some dew activity in your life, even though you become a mountain, that those around you might get watered by a small amount of dew. Uh, I'm going to start this morning in Psalm 65, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up. Our pastor has started a club called the 63 Club. 63 Club is from Psalm 63, and how you get to that, you can check in. You just write 63club.com and sign in. Now, this is basically for men only. There is a call of God to men in times past, and there's a call of God to men now. Now, God had a plan, and you ladies, listen to me. God loves you, and he loves your prayers, and he loves your stability, and he loves you to do what he has you do. And God used many, many women throughout the years and the ages. But we're going to find out that as God did things uh, back in the Old Testament and he started through, that he chose men to do the hard work. And he chose the women to do the polite, if you please, and the nice, easy work. But he put a load on men. This load that he put on men was not designed for a woman to carry. It was designed for men to carry. He started with the first Israelite, which was Abraham, which was the first of his children, which I call the Jewish children. They are God's chosen people. They were God's chosen people. They still are God's chosen people. God made a plan. He sent Jesus in that plan to come die on the cross. Well, the Jewish people, by choice, choose to not accept him as the Messiah that was told about that was going to come. And because they rejected him, he opened the door and said, well, I'll take this Gentile nation in 
and I will put the blessing that I put on you on this Gentile nation for a time. Now this is only for a season, a time. There is a time, it said in Ecclesiastes, for everything to happen. And everything's going to happen in the time that we live in, but God's the one going to stir the pot and make the things happen during that period of time. And uh, one of the things is, is the Gentile nation is grafted in. It has now become the church that God established. Uh, remember now when Peter said, Thou art the Son of God, and Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on this word, the son, that I am the Son of God, and he built a church. And he grafted in, and when he died on the cross, and he, he rent the veil. If you should happen by any chance to be a Jewish person, and you're listening to this, you know your book. You know what the Old Testament said. You know what the Bible said. You know how the priest could only once a year, once a year the priest could go behind that veil. But when Jesus rent that veil, that priest no longer can go behind that veil once a year. So what in the world are you doing right now for your sanctification? What are you doing? If, if say you, 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 you could say, well, I keep the law, but you can't keep the law. You can't keep it. Because you know why you can't keep it? Because the end of that law was the veil, and that veil's gone. Jesus rent that veil in half so that nobody could else could go behind it again. After he left and went to heaven, nobody else could go behind that veil again except through him. He became the veil. If you please, Jesus became the veil. He is the veil now. If you want to go to God the Father, you have to come through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now those of you that are modern day Jews, if you're here and you happen to be listening to this, uh, you need to become a converted Jew. And instead of being a Zionist, one who is taking care of the land, sending your money over there to the land and everything, you need to uh, get converted. And if, if by asking Jesus to forgive you of your sin, come in your heart. Just because your forefathers missed it doesn't mean you've got to miss it. Just because tradition says that you're going to follow tradition, you don't have to follow some traditions and not be wrong. Actually, every single solitary race and family has some traditions in it that are wrong that they brought down through the years. And it's like a person who lives in a house that has many superstitions. Now, personally, I don't think the 13th is an unlucky day. I was born on the 13th. My wife was born on a Friday the 13th. Both of us was Friday 13th children. And uh, we do very well. We're not living by superstition. When I, I'm a paint contractor, I've walked under ladders all my life. Uh, I've actually moved mirrors from houses and stuff, threw them in a dumpster and broke them, and I, I didn't get seven years of bad luck breaking that mirror. Now, we don't live by superstition. We live by fact. Fact is that Jesus came, died on the cross, that all, all, everybody that's Gentile or Jew, that's Greek or barbarian, that's Scythian, that's uh, anybody uh, from the Old Testament or the New Testament who believed in Jesus Christ and said, uh, come into my heart and save my soul, forgive me of my sin, was covered and they were able. Now I go behind that veil every day. Every morning when I get up, I step behind the veil and say, the veil of Jesus Christ. They lead me, guide me today, uh, direct my paths. I see our time is coming and going. Let me tell you that uh, if you want to listen to a good station with some good teaching, turn to uh, uh, Punch In, uh, W-O-A-K dot com, LaGrange, and that's a radio station you can listen to on this very machine right here and have good, sound preaching and teaching 24 hours a day. Uh, there's many things on there for many people. Now, we're going to talk about becoming a mountain and, and not a valley or a molehill. I'm talking about a mountain with good, clean, fresh water can run down from the top, can run from you. The Bible said you will be rivers of